Hey, in this video, we're going to talk about the pituitary gland. So, I drew a little uh, schematic over here for you guys um, to talk about how the pituitary gland actually forms in like a developing organism. So, the pituitary gland actually consists of two tissue types. Uh, the first is nervous tissue. which I've drawn here in orange. And the second is glandular epithelium. Okay, so in the developing organism, um, there's we have the brain in orange, so that's the nervous tissue, and we have the developing pharynx in green, and that's the uh, epithelium. So um, they're actually in very close proximity uh, in the developing organism and they uh, fuse together like I've drawn here. Um, but eventually the sphenoid bone um, comes in and separates them, the pharynx from the brain. So that's the sphenoid bone. And eventually what happens is this pituitary gland that's formed here between these two tissue types detaches from the pharynx and um, stays connected to the brain, which we'll talk about in a minute. And the sphenoid bone here um, develops in between. The space, um, this little depression in the sphenoid bone that um, the pituitary gland rests in, it's known as the cella tersica. So that's the space in which the pituitary gland rests um, in the sphenoid bone. So now let's look at the larger picture we have here. Um, so what ends up happening is the pituitary gland has two parts, the anterior portion and the posterior portion. So the nervous tissue we talked about earlier, which um, arose from the developing brain, becomes the posterior pituitary. Um, and then the posterior pituitary is actually connected to the brain by the infundibulum, which is this um, band of tissue here. All right. So then the glandular epithelium portion, which um, arises from the developing pharynx, uh, that is the anterior, post, uh, anterior pituitary. So those are the two sections there. Um, the anterior pituitary is larger by weight, and because it's glandular epithelium, it actually produces its own hormones, whereas the posterior pituitary does not produce its own hormones, but it does release them, which I'll get into in a little bit. So just know that um, the anterior pituitary does produce its own hormones. Um, that's important. So next we're gonna talk about the hormones and where they're produced, where they're released, and how it all kind of comes together. So the first thing we should talk about is the uh, portion of the brain that the pituitary is connected to is the hypothalamus. So it's connected to the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus actually contains cells which produce hormones. So here, I've drawn this group of cells in black. Um, they produce hormones. Um, and I'm not gonna go into exactly what hormones they produce, but they actually produce um, releasing and inhibiting hormones that in turn control what is released um, in the anterior pituitary, which I'll get into in a minute. But um, I'm not gonna go through all the details um, it should be in your notes and stuff like that. It, it'll get a lot more complicated if I try to explain all the different hormones right now. So what ends up happening is we have um, an artery that leads into the hypothalamus right here. And this is called the superior hypophyseal artery.
Now I should say, and I should have told you earlier, but um, the pituitary gland altogether is also known as the um, hypothesis. So I'm just gonna write that down here. Usually we just call it the pituitary gland, but that's why you're gonna see um, the um, root for a lot of these words say like the hypocele or hypophyseal vein, um, different parts. So the anterior pituitary can actually be called the adenohypothesis. And the posterior pituitary is known as the neuro hypothesis. Sorry if I say this word wrong. I think it's really hard to say. <laughs> hypothesis. So, sorry I didn't mention that earlier. Um, it's just a little easier to understand what these words come from if you know that. So, the superior hypophyseal artery uh, enters the hypothalamus and it actually branches off into a capillary bed surrounding all of these cells inside the uh, hypothalamus that release hormones. So now we have a capillary bed and leaving from that capillary bed will be a vein. So this vein travels down the pituitary gland and ends in a second capillary bed inside the anterior pituitary. So this vein is called the um, hypothalamus hypophyseal portal vein. We'll talk about why it's called a portal vein in just a minute. So the hypo hypo hypophyseal portal vein um, leaves the hypothalamus, enters the pituitary gland, and then it branches off into a second capillary bed in the anterior pituitary. And I'm gonna have to erase some of this right here. And then it leaves the anterior pituitary as the superior hypophyseal Vein. So, first of all, first of all, let's just talk about the fact that we have a portal system. There's only a few in the human body, um, and this is one of them. So this is the hypophyseal portal system. The, this whole um, group of veins and arteries here and capillary beds, and a portal system, uh, like you probably know, is a series of two capillary beds um, in a row, basically. So usually, you have blood coming from the heart, it ends in a capillary bed somewhere, and then it goes, it becomes deoxygenated and returns back to the heart and is recycled. Um, in a portal system, you actually have a series of two capillary beds, one where the blood was oxygenated and then becomes deoxygenated, and a second where it only deals with deoxygenated blood. So that's the um, hypophyseal portal system right here. So first, we have hormones released in the hypothalamus in this group of cells and they enter the blood at this first capillary bed. Then they're gonna travel down the, uh, in the bloodstream, of course, in the hypophyseal portal vein, and they're gonna exit um, in the anterior pituitary at the second capillary bed. Now, like I mentioned before, the um, hormones produced in the hypothalamus are releasing or inhibiting hormones. So um, these hormones control what hormones are released by the anterior pituitary. Um, so whatever ones are um, stimulated to be released will be released and enter the second capillary bed and then leave the pituitary through the um, superior hypophyseal vein. And um, just a reminder, because these hormones are traveling in the bloodstream, they get taken throughout the entire body, although they'll only be used in um, the specific locations where the receptors are found. So if you have the... Um, thyroid stimulating hormone, it's only going to be activated in the thyroid, even though it'll be carried throughout the blood throughout the entire body. So um, again, we have the capillary beds here, uh, produced hormones produced by um, the hypothalamus, 
uh, are releasing or inhibiting hormones, they get carried down to the second um, capillary bed in the anterior pituitary, which controls which hormones um, that the anterior pituitary produces will release. Whichever ones are released will enter the bloodstream at the second capillary bed and be taken to the body. And that's how the portal system works. Now let's talk about the a little less complicated um, uh, hormone releasing system in the uh, posterior pituitary. So again, in the hypothalamus, we have these um, cells that produce hormones. Um, but in, in this area, they're actually neurons. So um, if you recall, a group of cell bodies of a neuron that are found in the central nervous system are known as nuclei. So we have two groups of nuclei, one here and one here. We have the paraventricular nuclei. which is this group here. And then we also have the supraoptic nuclei. So again, these are um, the cell bodies of neurons found in the hypothalamus. And because it's in the central nervous system in the brain, they're called nuclei. The group of um, cell bodies is called a nuclei. Um, so then the axons of these neurons travel down um, through the hypothalamus into the pituitary gland. Um, so even though the hormones are produced here, they're gonna be stored in the posterior pituitary. So this is um, where the hormones are stored and will be released from. So like I said earlier, the posterior pituitary doesn't actually produce hormones, but it does release them. Um, unlike the anterior pituitary, which does produce its own hormones. So, um, the difference between these two um, nuclei is just they produce different hormones. Um, I can go into that in a second. And um, so again, let's talk about how these hormones are released into the blood and everything. Okay, so first we have um, the uh, another vein coming in. This one is known as the inferior hepatocele artery. Sorry, I said vein, I meant artery. So it'll come in here lead to another capillary bed. So this is the inferior hypophyseal artery. And then it will leave as the inferior hypo hypophyseal vein. So what happens is these uh, hormones are produced in the hypothalamus, they carry down the axons of these nuclei, and then they're picked up at the um, end of the neurons by the capillary bed here, and they're released into the bloodstream, and then they'll leave through the inferior hypocele vein where they will be taken across the body like we talked about earlier, even though it's going to be transported everywhere in the body through the bloodstream. It'll only be um, used in the areas of the body that have the proper receptors for that specific, whatever specific hormone it is. So um, again, let's just reiterate that the anterior pituitary produces hormones while the posterior pituitary only releases hormones. It does not produce any. Um, so this is the pituitary gland. Um, I'm actually going to erase this just so I can make you a list of hormones that are released by both the anterior and posterior sides. I'm not going to get into it all like, you know, I could talk for 30 more minutes about all the different hormones, but I will make you guys a list just for, you know, so you can like see it written down like that. Um, but that's everything. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Now let me just make a list here. So first we have the posterior pituitary. And these aren't hormones um, necessarily produced 
by this, it's just release because we know that the um, anterior or the posterior pituitary cannot uh, produce hormones. There we go, that's the right color. There we go. Okay, so the anterior pituitary releases six different hormones. Uh, number one is growth hormone. Number two is prolactin. Three, thyroid stimulating hormone. Number four is adrenocorticotropic hormone. So let's see. Adreno cortico tropic hormone. Five, we have follicle stimulating hormone. I'm just going to write an H here because I'm running out of room. And the last one is luteinizing hormone. Okay, so these are the six hormones that are released by the anterior pituitary. Like we talked about, the hypothalamus produces um, hormones which control the release of these hormones. So, for example, you might have thyroid. Uh, well, let's think. See, so you could have from the um, hypothalamus, you could have growth hormone releasing hormone, for example, or growth hormone inhibiting hormone, or something like that. And so, those themselves don't act on that part of the body, they only act on the anterior pituitary to control what is released or what's inhibited. Um, for the posterior pituitary, we have only two that are released oxytocin. And this is produced by the paraventricular nuclei. And we also have ADH, which is produced by the supraoptic nuclei. So that's it. I just thought it'd be a little helpful at the end just to have the list. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail like I said, but I hope that video helped you guys. And uh, yeah, that's all I got.